Hey everyone, Christian here, and this is going to be a review on Phoenix as a genus. So I have a number of Phoenix species here. I have this one here. I have these two here, which look like Reclinol, actually three back there, a little bit shorter one, um, a little bit wispier ones. And then I have ones, this one's a little bit fuller. And then I have this one, which is kind of like the others, but a little bit taller and a little bit, a little bit fuller and greener. And that could just be to a, the shade being here next to this oak. So what I want to talk about is Phoenix hybrids and why eventually all Phoenix will kind of look something like this palm, maybe with a, with a little extra sucker or two. So because Phoenix is a dioecious genus where you um, basically have to have a male and a female to produce a viable seed, uh, you're going to have a lot of hybridization because the females are going to have to look for male flowers to uh, to pollinate and they won't be from the same species. So let's say we have a uh, canariensis, you know, over here and a, and a uh, reclinata over here, you know, and one's a male, one's a female. The only way they're going to produce viable seed is by hybridizing. So that has been happening in Florida for probably at least a century and a half, if not longer, and and also in California and uh, other and throughout the Mediterranean, uh, I imagine, although I haven't you know seen it firsthand for quite some time. But um, so you'll get these palms that are not quite reclinata, they're not quite canariensis, they're not quite, for example, dactylifera. And this is kind of like the epitome of all those palms. So if we look at this palm here, we can see that it looks kind of like a solitary reclinata, but the leaves are a little bit too uh, wide and wispy for reclinata. Reclinata is typically a more upright leafed palm. It has actually has the twist of Phoenix rupicola, which I've never done a vlog on. It's the cliff date palm, but it, it also has the leaf bases. They're not really, they're a little bit knobby like Robolini, but they're also kind of have that scarring like canariensis. So this has aspects of like five or six or almost a half dozen um, of Phoenix. And you can see here it's actually producing seed which looks identical to Robolini seed. If you look, it has that dark maroon color, small, and that's probably viable too. Uh, we can see it only produced about 50 or so seed on that brack, and the brack comes out more like a dactylifera would. So the other thing that uh, about this palm is that it, obviously it has very large thorns like canariensis, and they're yellow, where you can look over here, for example, it's a, I guess a dark yellow to orange. We look over here, and the bases are little are not nearly the same color. They're more of a greenish, light yellow. So we could go and take a look at all of these palms, but this is really the epitome of them all. This is kind of like the a little bit of everything. You know, the, the, the crown kind of screams Robolini. The trunk is a little bit canariensis Robolini. This looks more like Reclinata slash Rupicola. And the, the bract looks like Dactylifera in shape, Robolini seed in size. So we have like a... Uh, you know, a variety pack of, of Phoenix in this one palm. So, you know, looking over here, you know, you look at the crowns here, they're, they don't hold any fiber or much. They're more upright. They don't kind of come outward as much. And, uh, you know, they're obviously clumping to an extreme. This might be a Robolini reclinata. It might just be straight reclinata. Just, a, you know, they, they're a little bit variable, as are these. But when these all hybridize, you know, so this is a little bit light yellow. You know, this is a little bit more green and these are this is these are shorter more compact these are more uh, laid back and uh, droopy and so you can kind of see how there's so much variation probably because these have all hybridized once with another species so uh, back you know this is what really what comes a problem because the keeping the purity of a phoenix of these species um, is is quite a problem in places like uh, the Canary Islands uh, the canariensis is, is protected in habitat. You can't grow. You can't plant anything anywhere near uh, the native uh, plants that grow, the palms that grow there. So that's one positive. You know, in other areas like uh, in the Middle East, there is a little bit of a buffer because it's very hard for other palms to kind of creep across the desert and grow in a lot of the habitats of Dactylifera. So a lot of those will be protected. But then there's some that just really aren't. Like Reclinata does grow throughout West Africa, as does pretty much every other phoenix that people can try and grow so they will grow it for fruit for food and um whether it's to harvest the crown for uh you know a heart of palm or the seed to eat whether it be fermented or not as you can see my, my other video and you'll just get continue to get hybridization and obviously for landscaping use probably in areas for example uh florida california australia eastern eastern and western australia 
actually out th throughout coastal Australia, but now that I think about it. And like Southern Europe, Northern Africa, going to be the, the culprits for a lot of this uh, situation that would be going on. And throughout time, it's going to slowly and slowly kind of like, you know, we as humans will slowly cause the, the integration of like many species uh, of Phoenix into like one hybrid that might it, when it may or may not be stable it may you know vary throughout every seed cycle but it'll kind of just look like this one solitary with maybe a little sucker going on like i mentioned in uh in the beginning of the video that uh it'll eventually become just this you know this one plant and let's hope that does not happen so if you're looking for seed and you want to grow pure phoenix you want to you want a pure species uh definitely try and get your seed from habitat or get your seed from someone you know that would would get it from habitat so for example in my you know if i were going to be selling i rarely sell rarely sell phoenix seed but if i were to i would make sure that it was coming from habitat i would not collect this seed here because it would it probably would not look like this palm and it would probably just cause more hybridization in the future so i guess you know in an ending kind of think twice you know if you're collecting seed from off of a phoenix especially like a, a clumper or one that look, doesn't look pure, realize that, you know, this constant hybridization will eventually cause a, uh, you know, a lack of purity throughout the species. I mean, you might lose, you know, centuries down the road, you, the species may be lost completely due to hybridization. This is a problem for many genera, and I'll probably go over this with other, uh, other genera um, in the future, but the Phoenix is the most obvious one. So, and, and you know, here we can see a Robolini. And, uh, you know, that one is pure, uh, but that's probably the only pure species of Phoenix throughout this whole row, and, uh, most likely. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel and you want to see more palm reviews and more palm discussions, go ahead and subscribe. Hit that bell notification and I, because I do go live quite often and you can talk to me, ask some palm questions. And uh, if you have any questions about Phoenix hybridization, go ahead and leave them down below and I will uh, get to them as soon as I can. Thanks for watching.